Okay, let's take a look at the loop portions of the control structures. And these are called uh, for, while, and repeat. So we've got a for loop, a while loop, and a repeat loop. I've gone ahead and typed in the code here so we can save a little time and spend a little extra time just examining what we've got. Let's take a look at the for loop first. All right, that's up here in the top. Okay, so we're looking at this portion here. And what we've got here is the declaration where we've got the for, do, and end. So again, you notice that those are in blue, right? So again, we've got the end just as we did with the if statement. And of course, we're doing that so that we can create, um, if you like, a sandwich or a layer where we can put our code in between um, and the script knows that that's the, the limit of our for statement. And again, we've got the area here where we can go ahead and put our condition. In this particular case, we're saying for x equals 1 comma 10. So that's the minimum and maximum of this loop. So it's going to loop from 1 to 10. And we've got a dialog message here where it's going to display that. Uh, it'll say number so on and so forth. It'll give us the number here uh, of each loop. So why would we use a for loop? Well, some of the reasons you would use a for loop, for example, would be to loop through data. So let's say you had a list of files that you wanted to go through. Um, instead of actually creating an, a separate action for examining each file, you could go ahead and create a loop that's equal to the number of files you have. In this case, for example, 10 files. And uh, you could actually put one single action in between there and it would act on each of the files as it went through. So that's one of the reasons you would use a for loop. And basically, it really economizes your code and allows you to do a lot of things. Now, another example might be, let's say you had a table full of data, and you wanted to loop through that table and search for a value. Let's say you had a table full of uh, employee names, and you wanted to find an employee named John. You could actually use a for loop to loop through that table and find that data. OK, another way to create a loop is a while loop. So let's take a look at that here. Then we've set the value of a variable here. So we say a equals 1. And then we're saying here, while a is less than 10, do. And then we've got an area in here where we put code before the end statement. Now, in this particular case, let's say we added a dialog message in here. And I should have been indenting um, those statements earlier. And of course, I wasn't. Uh, so that's my mistake. But basically, um, I didn't want to. Um, you know, get too much into the syntax of things right away. Uh, but suffice to say that what you see here is more correct. It's better to indent your code that goes in between uh, these statements so that it's easier to read. And when you start nesting these statements, or for example, using multiple uh, statements inside of each other, it comes in really handy to indent them like that. So at any rate, uh, back to our script, we've got our while loop here, and it's going to actually go through 10 times. So let's go ahead and put in a dialog message. And again, we're just going to go ahead and work off the same model that we have up top where we say number and then it'll say comma a and it'll display which number uh, that particular variable is on in that loop and actually let's go ahead and add the title of each so that we'll know when we're going through here and testing it and then we've got the repeat loop. Okay, the repeat loop is basically, in a sense, identical to the while loop, except the value gets tested at the end of the loop instead of at the start. You notice that with the while loop, you're testing the value here at the beginning of the loop, whereas with the repeat, you're actually testing it here at the end. So we'll say, uh, repeat this particular condition. In this case, we've got the incrementing of a variable, and we will also add uh, this dialog message action. I'm just going to go ahead and cut and paste one in here. And I'm going to indent it, and we will say, oops, double click, and we'll say repeat loop number. And we're going to change that variable to be i. There we go. And these are actually uh, examples, are very similar to examples from the document. So you can go through those two and, and take a look in the scripting guide. But at any rate, we've got a repeat loop set up here. Now, let's go ahead and look at the last uh, thing that we need to look at here, which is the break statement. So if we want to break a loop at any particular time, and this works for the for loop, the while loop, or the repeat loop, uh, we can use a break statement. So let's add that to our last example here. So we'll add an if statement inside our repeat loop, and we'll say if uh, i is greater than 5, then break. And what that's going to do is it's going to override uh, our main loop and it's going to test that value and our main loop here is of course until i is greater than 10 but this is going to override that and it's actually going to break our repeat loop because we've spe specified that here with the break statement so that would be right here with the semicolon where we've typed in break okay so let's go ahead and run this application and then we'll come back and take a final look at the code
Okay, there we go. And here we are. So we are in our for loop, and we can see it displays one, two, three, and so forth. It'll loop through to uh, the number ten, and then it goes on to our while loop. Now we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and of course, in that particular case, um, because it was uh, testing that value um, differently, it only went to nine and not ten, as in the original. Uh, for loop. Okay, and here we've got a repeat loop number one, two, three, four, five. Now remember, we added that break statement. Now what's going to happen? Nothing. It actually exits the application. We don't get the rest of that repeat loop because we broke it. So that's what that break loop did. Normally, if we took that break loop out, that last loop would have ran through until the number was higher than 10. Now, uh, again here, let's take a look at why um, our second test, our while loop, uh, only went to 9, whereas our original test went to 10. In the original test, we used a for loop here, and we specified 10 as the highest number. In the while loop, we actually said while a is less than 10. Now, if we had changed that to say while a is less than or equal to 10, it actually would have went to 10. Okay, so that's why. But at any rate, this is a for loop, a while loop, and a repeat loop. We'll take a look uh, later here at how to use a for loop to enumerate tables. Uh, but suffice to say now that these are all very, very useful and I encourage you to experiment with them and use them in your scripts. Um, there's, you know, myriad ways that you can use these. So I don't want to get bogged down in examples. But for example, uh, the thing about looping through data tables, uh, looping through file lists or lists of any type, and looping through any type of data that's contained in any type of a, a grid format or a table. Uh, for example, maybe database information uh, that you've got stored locally in a SQLite database or even remotely uh, in any type of database. For example, PHP, MySQL, etc. The sky's the limit. But basically, these loops allow you to uh, go through large amounts of data very fast, particularly if you're searching for a particular piece of data or you want uh, to have a certain function act upon your data in a repetitive manner. So that's the loops and we'll go ahead to the next video tutorial now. Uh, we can use a break statement. So let's add that to our last example.